Hello, everyone. I'm Francis Ma, and I lead product development for Firebase. I'm delighted to welcome you to our fifth annual Firebase Summit. Every year, we look forward to bringing our community of developers together to share what we've been up to and to see what you've been building with our tools. But before we jump into that, I want to first talk about how this unprecedented year has shaped our work. We've always believed that apps have drastically improved the way we live. But over the past few months, we've seen that apps also enhance our ability to adapt to change. The events of 2020 have brought both changes and challenges for all of us. During this time, more businesses, institutions, and families have turned to apps to stay connected, productive, and entertained. At the same time, we've seen developers like you step up with strength, resilience, and ingenuity to build and scale apps people are relying on. Our team, alongside the rest of Google, has strived to be helpful and supportive in this moment. Our mission is to help developers succeed by making it easy to build and operate mobile and web apps. We bring together Google products and cloud services across the lifecycle of your app under one platform. Through Firebase, you can quickly spin up your app backend without managing infrastructure, release your app with confidence with app monitoring, and boost engagement with rich analytics and experimentation capabilities. People are relying on your apps. You can rely on us to keep your app and business up and running. Last year, we shared that 2 million apps actively use Firebase every month. This year, that number continues to grow to over 2.5 million monthly active apps, which includes global businesses like Gameloft, Hotstar, Le Figo, and innovative startups like Classkick. Now, I want to zoom in on Classkick because they're one example from our incredible community of how apps are helping people adapt to new surroundings. Classkick is a full spectrum learning platform that teachers can use to digitize their classrooms, monitor their students' work, and most importantly, give real time feedback. Classkick also gives students the freedom to work at their own pace and receive help when they get stuck. To build this near instantaneous communication, between teachers and students, the Classkick team turned to Firebase and Google. Their backend is powered by a real-time database and supported by Google Cloud monitoring and logging. When the COVID-19 pandemic forced schools to close, Classkick onboarded thousands of new teachers and school administrators to their platform. With a little re-architecting on their end and some assistance from Firebase, they were able to scale exponentially to meet this new demand so students can continue to learn effectively from home and stay engaged with their teachers and classmates. Now, as a parent myself, who's also juggling between work and helping my kids with remote learning, it's stories like these that inspire us to keep making Firebase better. This year, we've been focused on three things. First, helping you accelerate your app development with building blocks that solve many common and core problems involved with building your app. Second, helping you run your app more effectively by simplifying your workflows and surfacing actionable insights so you can optimize your app experience. And third, helping you tailor Firebase to your needs by making the platform more extensible and giving you more control and flexibility as you scale. Today, we've got exciting announcements to share across all three of these areas. So let's dive in, starting with how Firebase accelerates app development. As we've all realized, speed, agility, and productivity are even more important in today's environment because we're working across a distributed team, facing distractions at home, and seeing shifts in customer demands and behavior. To help you stay focused on building amazing app experiences, Firebase provides fully managed backend services, from databases that sync and store data in real time, to cloud functions that help you run code in the cloud, to Firebase ML that makes it easy to add the power of machine learning into your app. With these services, you can quickly set up your entire infrastructure, create efficient workflows, and add new features and functionality to your app in fewer steps. Last year, we launched Firebase Emulator Suite to let you run emulated versions of our backend products for a faster and safer developer experience. 
This suite runs locally on your own machine, enabling rapid iterations without touching production data or incurring costs. The emulator suite even comes with its own UI, which gives you a nice visual console for your local environment. It even has extra features to make development easier and testing easier. To tell you what's new in our emulator suite, I'm going to turn it over to David. The emulator suite already supports hosting, real-time database, Firestore, Cloud Functions, and Cloud PubSub. But we have added a new product to that list, Firebase Authentication. So now you have your own local development environment for managing test users and running integration tests that rely on authentication. And it's really easy to add it to your current development workflow. After a quick setup, you can boot the entire emulator suite up with a single command, Firebase Emulator Start. Your local development suite can now consist of hosting, real-time database, Firestore, functions, PubSub, and now authentication. You can view each one with the emulator. The emulator UI now has a new authentication tab for user management. You have all the options you need when creating new users, like display name, email, password, photo URL, phone number, and even custom claims, which is really helpful in role-based systems. Connecting your app to the auth emulator is easy with the connector API. The connector API points your app to the local auth emulator port. After this API call, there is nothing you need to change about your existing Firebase authentication code. It works the same with the emulator as it does in production. One of the great features of Firebase authentication are its cloud function triggers. This authentication trigger fires whenever a new user is created and checks for project invitations sent by other users in Firestore. So when a new user signs up, they are automatically added to the projects they need. Authentication triggers run locally, which gives you low latency responses, instant code reload, and really a much better development experience overall. The new emulator suite with Firebase Authentication is available today. Check out our getting started guide to add it to your project. Thanks, David. As you just saw, the emulator suite which now includes support for Firebase Auth, lets you shift to a local-first developer workflow so you can experiment and rapidly iterate without worrying that you'll break something. Since launch, we've heard from so many developers just how much they love the emulator suite because it allows them to develop their code so much faster. Speaking of fast development, I want to highlight another backend product that can save you both time and hassle, Firebase Hosting. Firebase Hosting helps you easily deploy secure, fast-loading web apps and landing pages that are backed by a global CDN. Just last month, we've added new features that many of you have been asking for, like an integration with cloud logging that gives you more server-side analytics, support for broadly compression to boost your site performance, and improve support for localized content. But that's not all. Today, we're happy to announce the launch of Preview Channels, Preview channels let you see your changes before publishing them to your site. With a single command, you can deploy changes to a preview channel in seconds and share that unique channel URL with your team. To learn more about this feature and see a demo, check out our dedicated session called Shipping Production Web Apps with Hosting. All right, so far, we've talked about how the Firebase Emulator Suite and Firebase Hosting can accelerate your app development by making iteration and collaboration easier, quicker, and safer across teams. The other way that Firebase speeds up development is through Firebase extensions, which are prepackaged solutions that automate common development tasks and let you add new functionality in fewer steps. At last year's Firebase Summit, we introduced you to nine extensions to make your life easier. Whether you want to resize an image, add people to an email list, or shorten URLs, we have an extension that you can plug into your project and get going. And we've added some new extensions since then. Let's go to Todd for an update here. Thanks, Francis. So the first new extension I want to highlight is Detect Online Presence, which lets you see what users or devices are currently online when they connect using Cloud Firestore. This can be really useful if you're a game developer or building a social app and want to let your users know when their friends are online. 
But what's even more exciting is we've started partnering with developers like Stripe to build new extensions using our combined expertise. The first one, Send Invoices with Stripe, will let you automatically send branded customer invoices when an order is added to a particular collection inside your Cloud Firestore database. But I want to give you a closer look at the second extension the Stripe team has built with us, Run Subscription Payments with Stripe. Now, subscriptions can be a great way for developers to earn money. You can give users upgraded features or bonus material when they subscribe. And while mobile developers have had various app stores to help them with managing these payments, web developers can use services like Stripe to manage most of the work around processing payments, providing trial periods, handling cancellations and prorated refunds, and much more. And while all that is definitely helpful, there's still the work involved in having your web application communicate back and forth with Stripe. Your app needs to know what subscription options are available. Stripe needs to know what product your customer is purchasing. And most importantly, your application needs to know if your user is currently a subscriber. Now, this is where the subscription payments extension comes in really handy. It handles the majority of the work in making sure Firebase and Stripe can communicate with each other so you can handle subscription payments with little effort. Let's see how it works. All right, so here I have my exciting new blog, Todd's Tech Tips. And while I have given away a lot of my content for free, I've decided to make some of my posts, like this one here, available only for subscribers. Now, on the back end, these posts are being stored right here in Cloud Firestore. I've got my normal posts here and my premium posts in a separate collection. So I basically have the foundation set up to provide a premium service. Now I just need to do the work to make that happen. So the first thing I'll do is install the Run Subscription Payments extension. This basically involves telling the extension a little bit about my database, like where I'm storing my customer info, where I want to store documents about my premium products, setting up a webhook for Stripe to talk to, and adding a few API keys. Now that that's done, you'll see that when I add new products, like my premium membership here in Stripe, those will get added automatically to my Cloud Firestore database. The cloud function created by this extension is doing the work of keeping all of my products in sync. And so right here is my premium membership, and my pricing options are listed here in this subcollection. So now inside my web app, if I need to show my premium subscription pricing options to my user, I can query this collection. I'll grab the pricing documents, and then I'll display these values on the page. And so now when I reload my page, it looks like this with my pricing information here at the bottom. And that's certainly helpful, but what's even more exciting is now I can add the ability to upgrade our user to a premium subscriber and about 20 lines of code. Let me show you how. So the first thing I need to do is create a new document in a checkout sessions collection where I add the ID of the specific subscription plan my user is interested in, along with a few redirect URLs. Now, what you'll see on the back end is that as soon as that document gets added, and honestly, it happens too fast for me to really capture here, a cloud function created by this extension communicates with Stripe to create a session ID and then adds that session ID into this document. So back in my client, I can watch this document for changes. And when it gets updated with the session ID, I can take that information and use the Stripe JavaScript library to redirect our users to Stripe, where they can go ahead and complete the payment process. No copying down my credit card number now. When that whole process is complete, Stripe redirects the user back to my website. But on the back end, the Stripe extension has performed two important bits of work for me. First, it's added this subscription subcollection directly to my user document, so I have an official record of what subscriptions my user is a part of, which I can query at any point. But also, it's added in a custom auth claim to my user's Firebase auth token. Here, uh, I'll show it to you here in my Chrome console. It's this Stripe role claim here. Now, this provides a convenient way to look up our user's membership status through the auth library in the JavaScript client, which means that on the client, I can now implement this get premium member status method like so. But of course, we know we can't entirely trust clients, and that's OK. This custom claim is signed by Firebase, which means we can use Firebase security rules to verify that this information is correct server side as well. So by adding a line like this, here are my security rules, I can make sure that only premium members can see my awesome new content. And this means that if I reload our page, I finally get to see my premium content. And uh, look at that. That's, uh, that's anticlimactic. Well, it just so happens that the Stripe extension also makes it easy for me to send users to the Stripe customer portal so they can adjust or cancel their membership as well. So uh, yeah, I, I think we'll just do that. Now, there's a lot more that this extension can do for you, like handling taxes, everybody's favorite topic, accepting coupon codes, handling when users delete their account, and much more. 
you can check out the documentation to get started. And just like all of our extensions, all the code is freely available on GitHub, so you can see how these things work, file pull requests, or even make your own versions of these cloud functions. It's completely up to you. And of course, none of this would have been possible without the really smart folks at Stripe who wrote a lot of this code. So thank you, Stripe engineers. And back to you, Francis. Thanks, Todd. Since the early days of Firebase, we've strived to offer fully managed backend infrastructure that speeds up your time to market. With the emulator suite, you can develop, prototype, and test your code instantly in a safe local environment. Firebase Hosting's new preview channels let you check that your changes are working as intended right away. And with our new extensions, you can easily add new features and functionality to your app without having to research or learn new APIs or code. It's all done for you. Over the coming year, we'll continue to invest in tools and building blocks that accelerate your app development so you can deliver value to your users in less time. Now, let's shift gears and talk about how Firebase can help you run your app more efficiently. Once you're ready to ship, you can use products like Test Lab, App Distribution, Performance Monitoring, and Crashlytics to release your app with confidence and improve its quality. We also offer products like remote config, cloud messaging, and A-B testing to help you increase user engagement. Our main goal is to surface actionable insights from your app data and simplify your workflows so you can optimize your app and ultimately keep users happy. Anytime you release a new version of your app, some of the first data points you'll want to pay attention to are the stability and performance metrics. After all, you want to make a good first impression with new users so they stick around and leave positive App Store reviews that boost your ranking. These days, nobody has the time or patience to wait for slow apps. Firebase Performance Monitoring gathers and presents data about your app's performance so you know exactly what's happening in your app when users are experiencing slowness from their point of view. But sometimes, there's so much information, it's hard to focus on what's important. To share how we're solving this problem of information overload, I'll turn over to Melissa. Thanks, Francis. We're excited to announce that we've redesigned the performance monitoring dashboard to help you focus on what matters most. The new performance monitoring dashboard makes it crystal clear if one of your critical metrics needs your attention so that you can take action as needed. Let's take a look at the new dashboard in action. The dashboard is customizable, allowing you to add the metrics that are critical to your business. For mobile apps, app start time is included on the dashboard out of the box, and you can have up to six metrics that can be swapped in or out at any time. Let's say that we're working on a news app called Friendly News, and recently we've gotten some feedback from users that the curated stories page is feeling slower than it did last week. We want to monitor metrics that could be related to this feedback front and center, so we'll start by adding slow rendering frames for the screen that users have been reporting issues about. We can do that by clicking here to select a metric. We'll select Screen Rendering Traces for the trace type, the Curated Stories Activity Trace, click Slow Rendering, then select the metric. Now we can easily spot that this screen is, in fact, rendering slower than it did last week, which aligns with what users were telling us. But in particular, we can see that it's actually a lot slower for the latest version of our app than our baseline. Let's say that we want to see how previous versions performed to get a better feel for whether the issue is only impacting the latest version. We can do that by selecting another version, the version picker. It looks like this increase is really only visible on the latest version, so we'll want to have our team dig deeper into this part of the code, since maybe this points to an issue with some new animations that were added to the screen recently or some other changes. Our team also recently added a custom trace to measure how long it takes to load a user's curated stories list, so we'll add that here too. And it looks like this metric isn't performing too well either, so we'll want to learn more about the impact of the issue. One way we can do this is by filtering down to a particular percentile to see how the slowest 75% or a different subset of users is viewing our app. It looks like at the 75th percentile, things are loading almost twice as slow as for our median, and the upward trend is even more severe. With some problems identified, our friendly news development team can get to work on fixes, and we'll be able to refer back here to help validate improvements. To help do this, we can narrow the dashboard to only show data since my latest version was released, since this is when my metrics started to spike, until the metrics on the dashboard trend green and look like this. 
And we know how important it is to detect and fix issues like these as soon as possible and prevent them from impacting your users. To that end, we've built a new, much faster processing pipeline so that coming soon, all metrics will be reported in under a few minutes' time. Back to you, Francis. Thanks, Melissa. The new performance monitoring dashboard takes mountains of performance data about your app, organizes it, and surfaces critical insights so you can focus on what's most important and take action to improve your app experience. Another way you can optimize your app is with Firebase Remote Config. Remote Config lets you dynamically alter your app, safely test and release new features, and stay in control of the whole experience without having to publish a new version. But as your project grows bigger and gets more complex, it might become harder to manage and navigate through all of your parameters. So over the past few months, we've added new features to help. To tell you more about them, here's Steve. Thanks, Francis. We've made a bunch of improvements to Remote Config to help you organize and visualize your app configuration so you can focus on the parameters that you care about the most. First is the ability to group parameters that are related into their own folder. For example, in this project, I've got a few parameters that I'm using to configure the fall theme for my app. I'll select those and click Move to Group. I'll call it Fall Theme and add a description so my team can tell what these are being used for. I'll save it, and now you can see those parameters are neatly tucked away in this folder together. Next up is parameter sorting and filtering. As the number of features in your app increases, the number of parameters you might be looking to control with Remote Config will grow as well. To help you manage this growing list, you can now sort your parameters alphabetically by parameter name, and we've improved the search functionality so you can quickly jump to the parameter you're looking for. As your Remote Config implementation gets even more sophisticated and you add more conditions to these values, it might be hard to see which values are applied to specific audiences. Which of these values, for instance, are applicable to the new feature that I'm rolling out in my app? To help you with that, we've added this filtering functionality so you can restrict your view to only parameters that affect a specific app or platform or a particular condition. You probably noticed the experiment icon that shows up for some parameters. We've brought experiment status right into the remote config dashboard so you no longer have to switch over to A-B testing to see which parameters are part of an experiment and you can click on the experiment icon to jump right into the experiment results page. That's it for dashboard improvements. On to some targeting improvements. Targeting by app version is a great way to ensure that only users with a specific app experience are affected. Previously, Remote Config only supported version targeting on Android, but now it's available on iOS too. You can now also use numeric comparators when defining your version condition. And Remote Config is smart enough to understand semantic versioning, so we know that version 10.0 is later than version 9.12. No more writing complicated regular expressions to match your app versions. Targeting all the users that have access to your new feature? Just set the condition to greater than or equal to your latest app version. I'd also like to give you a sneak peek of something that will be rolling out shortly. We've heard from you that you'd like to get more visibility into how your remote config is behaving for your customers. So we've added a couple of handy monitoring tools. We've added this graph here at the top of the page, which will give you a real time view into your customers fetching from remote config. So when you publish a new version of your template, you can see it rolling out and know exactly how many of your users have received it so far. Also, if you scroll down here to the parameter table, you'll see we added a fetch percentage column. This tells you how your conditions are evaluating for this parameter. So you can see the distribution of values that are reaching your customers. This is a great way to get confidence that your config is functioning how you expect and to understand the attributes of your user base. And those are our updates for remote config. Over to you, Francis. Thanks, Steve. The organizational and targeting improvements we made to remote config will help you manage and control your app experiences as you grow. Now, in addition to organization, automation is also necessary to run your app efficiently and get it ready to scale. For example, when your app crashes, you want to know as soon as possible so you can mobilize your team and resolve the issue before it becomes a big problem and impacts a lot of users. Firebase Crashlytics can help you monitor, prioritize, and fix stability issues. But how can you stay on top of stability when you're away from your desk? That's where automation comes in. To tell you more, let's go to Ibrahim. Thanks, Francis. 
Crashlytics is a great tool to measure your app stability, find out where your users are encountering problems, and really dig into the technical details around each crash to make it easier for you to deliver a stable app to all of your customers. And through the Firebase dashboard, you can access a lot of this information, from high-level overviews of your app stability to detailed stack traces for individual crashes. Of course, you probably don't want to spend every waking hour reloading your dashboard to see if there has been a sudden increase in your app's instability. So, Crashetics can send automated crash alerts to your team, whether that's through email, Jira, Slack, or PagerDuty. And if you ever want more information on your app's crashes, or want to view custom reports that aren't available in the Firebase console, we're given that power by letting you export your data to BigQuery for better logging, analysis, and troubleshooting. And while that's been really helpful, some of you want even more fine-tuned control over your alerts. Maybe you care about specific crashes on a particular device, or on the newest operating system, or in a particular part of the world. Well, just recently, we added the ability to stream in Crashitics data into BigQuery in near real time. So, you can act on that crash data faster than ever before, whether it is to power custom alerts or to create up to date customized dashboards. Here, let me show you how. This here is my lovely sample app, FriendlyPix. This is a fun picture sharing app that is available to download from the App Store. And I have got it running with the latest Crashitix SDK, so I can see how stable my latest release is. Like any Crashitix powered app, I am also signed up to receive alerts when there is a regression in a previously closed issue, or there is a sudden increase in a specific type of crash. And that is great, but now that iOS 14 is out, I am particularly concerned about whether there are any crashes that are happening on this latest operating system, and I wanted to be alerted as soon as new crashes are seen. Well, this is easy to do now that I am streaming my Crashitics data into BigQuery. Here, you can see my data in BigQuery. It is being added in near real time, usually within a few seconds of a crash being reported to Crashitics. And of course, I can go ahead and run custom queries against my data, right here in the BigQuery dashboard. But I can also run queries against them in any environment that can access BigQuery, like, for instance, a Google Cloud function. I can schedule a query and trigger my Cloud function with pops up when the result is ready. Or I can schedule a Cloud function that runs the actual query itself. Here, you can see that I have a cloud function running on a regular interval that queries all of my Crashitix data. So, I can look for all the crashes that occurred in the last hour, specifically on iOS 14. And if the number of crashes reaches a certain threshold, I can perform whatever action seems most appropriate. I can file a bug in our internal bug tracking tool, or send an email to my development team, or as in my case, I can ping my team's iOS developer Slack channel. Here's my Slack message with a link here to Data Studio, where I have created a customized report showing me just crashes related to iOS 14. But really, this could be any custom report you want to create based off your BigQuery data, and you are free to use any data visualization tool that talks to BigQuery, whether that is Data Studio, Tableau, Looker, or more. And again, because this BigQuery data is being streamed by Crashitics to BigQuery in near real time, I know I am seeing the most up-to-date version of my data. Thanks to these timely alerts 
and customize reports. I can release new versions of my app with confidence, knowing that if there's a problem with my app stability, I can get in there and fix it before my customers notice. Back to you, Francis. Thanks, Ibrahim. Crashlytics BigQuery Streaming enables you to automate a lot of the work needed for release monitoring so your team can stay on top of stability no matter where they are. This has been a highly requested feature, especially from our advanced enterprise customers, because it allows them to configure their alerting system to suit their needs. All right, so we just saw demos of our new features in performance monitoring, remote config, and Crashlytics. The underlying goal with all of these updates is to help you run your app more effectively by servicing actionable insights and simplifying and automating your workflows. With Firebase, we want to make it easy for you to operate your app and get you ready to scale. Now, we recognize that as your app and business grow, your development challenges may become more complex. So in addition to adding more automation capabilities, like the one you just saw with Crashlytics, we're also working to give you more control and flexibility so you can tailor our products to suit your sophisticated needs. One of the key factors in scaling a successful app is in knowing how your users are interacting with it. And thanks to our robust integration with Google Analytics, we can shed some light. Google Analytics helps you understand what actions users are taking inside your app, where they're spending their time, and why they churn, so you can make smarter decisions about your app's direction. We have some exciting updates on this front, so I'm going to pass it over to Kevin for more. Hey, thanks, Francis. Now, around this time last year, we announced a significant new upgrade in Google Analytics that allows you to measure your product's behavior across both native apps and your web-powered ones. This gives you a single view of customer engagement across platforms and devices for greater insight. But today, we're excited to announce three new APIs that make it easier for you to collect, record, and manage your data. Now let's take a look at the very first one, the Analytics Measurement Protocol. Measurement Protocol is an API that lets you log events to Google Analytics directly allowing you to augment your client-side data. Now, this can be useful in many different situations, from measuring IoT devices to point-of-sale systems. But one of the most common use cases is for developers to make direct server-to-server -server calls, like measuring offline purchases for an e-commerce business. Now, let me give you a quick demonstration of how this works. For many e-commerce applications, one important step in the process of completing a payment is to validate a user's credit card and to make sure it's not fraudulent. Obviously, for security reasons, this is not code we want to be running client-side. And moreover, there may be information we want to pass to analytics without potentially exposing it to a client. Now, let's see what that kind of setup could look like. In our app, we've got a standard purchase event with all the event parameters set for logging. Before we commit the purchase though, we want to first validate the payment method. So we'll be using a Google Cloud function. It's worth noting that if you'd prefer, you could easily set up this call in any other server-side environment as well. Depending on the outcome of this call, you might want to log an event or two with analytics to see what kind of fraud rate you're receiving or if this step is causing too many purchasers to drop out of your funnel. If you wanted to, you could actually wait for the call to complete, and after checking the status of it, log an event on the client in case fraud was detected. But in this case, we actually have some information, like the provider we used and the reason the payment was denied. We also have complex and proprietary application code that we want to remain server-side. With measurement protocol, I can accomplish that just by adding a few lines here. And our server-side function will fire off this analytics call directly. Now, in fact, if I head over to the Google Analytics console, I can see it right here in the real-time panel. And after just a few hours, they'll start showing up in our usual event reports here in Google Analytics and in the Firebase dashboard. In addition to the measurement protocol API, we've added two more that you might find useful. First, the Data API provides you with the tools you need to programmatically access your Google Analytics reporting data 
and it was built for those of you who want to make your own custom dashboards or view data from multiple projects at once. And the admin API gives you the ability to programmatically manage your analytics configuration and user access rights. For example, you can add user permissions or link Firebase projects to Google Analytics all through your own custom tools. And together, these APIs give you the tools to quickly and dynamically adapt your information architecture to your growing business so that you can spend less time tinkering in the console and more time building in an app that delights your users. To try out all of these features, head on over to the Google Analytics measurement site today and if you haven't done so already, start your upgrade to the new Google Analytics 4 experience. Now back to you, Francis. Thanks, Kevin. We know that data is the backbone of all successful businesses. With these updates to Google Analytics, we're giving you more control so you can record, collect, and manage your data in a way that suits your needs. But that's not all. Over the years, we've seen many of you take advantage of our BigQuery integration by exporting data from Firebase, joining it with data from other channels, and running sophisticated analysis, and even creating your own custom user segments in BigQuery. Now, we're giving you the power to bring these custom segments back from BigQuery into Firebase for targeting. Today, I'm thrilled to announce the launch of Imported Segments. With Imported Segments, you can target any custom user segments with products like Remote Config cloud messaging, and in-app messaging. So for example, let's say you're a game developer who has created a custom ML model that identifies your top performers. Now, you can send a message targeted to these top performers with cloud messaging. Or let's say you're an e-commerce app and have a physical storefront. Now you can import users that come from offline sources, like your store, and send them in-app promotion with Firebase in-app messaging. This feature is available through our Firebase BigQuery integration. All you have to do is create your own custom segment and import it into your BigQuery dataset. Then Firebase will be able to read that data and make those segments available for targeting. We built imported segments to give you more control and flexibility to target your users. We know scaling can come with some growing pains, but with this launch and the update to Google Analytics, we're making it easier to tailor Firebase to support your sophisticated needs. All right, we've spent the last 30 minutes talking a lot about how the new work we've done to make Firebase better. As you just saw, we've been focused on giving you building blocks that accelerate app development so you can solve many common and core problems in developing an app, helping you run your app more effectively by simplifying your workflows and servicing insights when you need it so you can increase app quality and user engagement and helping you tailor Firebase to your needs by making our platform more extensible and giving you more control and flexibility as you scale. With every improvement to Firebase, we aim to make app development easier so you can stay focused on building the amazing app experiences that people need to stay productive, connected, and entertained, especially during these strange times. People are relying on your apps to adapt and thrive in our changing world. You can rely on us to build operate, and scale successful apps. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy the rest of the day. And here is Derek to give you a preview of what's happening throughout the rest of Firebase Summit. Hey.